Hi, this is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's Dad, and I want to welcome you back to another segment on my little series of uh, what I think about marketing and some ideas on marketing tips that I, that I hope are going to be helpful for you. Uh, in this segment, I want to talk about what I consider to be one of the big myths of the marketing world. And I want to start out by uh, offering you a quote from a very, very smart guy, Peter Drucker who is no longer with us, but he was known as the father of leadership and the father of management in corporate America, was one of the most respected management uh, thinkers in the world. And he once wrote in one of his books that because its purpose is to create a customer, the business enterprise has two and only these two basic functions, marketing and innovation. And I think it's important for us to recognize this, that here is somebody who was a giant management leader and he boiled it down to two very, very simple functions of business. That the things we're supposed to be accomplishing are marketing and innovation. So marketing is really, really important. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, because for the most part, marketing does have a credibility gap. Let me talk about what I mean by that. Uh, one, marketing tends to be fuzzy math. You know, very often, marketers have a very hard time connecting the dots between their efforts and any meaningful or specific return on investment for their company. Uh, it's very, very common. I mean, like, especially at trade shows. You know, again, I know a lot of you go to trade shows. And so it's very, very common for people to have a very, very difficult time connecting the dots between the, the cost of exhibiting at the show, both in time and in money, uh, as, and the res any results after the show is over with. That's why so many companies fall back on the default of if I'm not there to write orders, I mean, I really should write orders because that, when I write orders, then I know that I'm connecting the dots between uh, spending the money at a trade show and getting results after the trade show. And if I can't connect the dots, then I'll do something like say, okay, well, I'm looking for traffic in my booth. And if I have a crowded booth, well, then I must have a successful show. See, that's fuzzy math because there is no way to connect the dots between traffic in a booth and results after a trade show. Another problem that uh, marketing has is that marketing often lacks accountability. Uh, like I said, it's, it's not only difficult for marketers to measure return on investment, but in fact, many times they're not even asked to. They are given a budget and they're just told, go out and market. Uh, for us. And, you know, there's there's a very famous saying that uh, John Wanamaker, who was the, who owned a department store, I believe in Philadelphia many, many years ago, called Wanamaker's, who was quoted as saying one time, uh, I know that 50% of my advertising works. Problem is, I don't know which 50% it is. See? So he can't really put any type of accountability on what he's doing there and so he just says well I guess I'm gonna to have to spend it all just to make sure that uh, something does happen so often that it does lack accountability now that is changing these days more and more companies are pushing their marketing departments to prove ROI uh, but then again that falls back into that uh, fuzzy math when they can't actually connect the dots in addition it can be wasteful like I said, Wanamaker said 50% of his, his dollars were working and 50% were not working. So half of his money was being wasted. Problem was, he didn't know which half it was. And quite often, marketing is disconnected from sales. That's pretty common for marketing to not have really that much connection with the sales department. And very often you also see them even butting heads with each other uh, for turf battles or uh, who's going to be in charge of what. And uh, that really causes a lot of problems. When the fact of the matter is that despite, despite sales being different from marketing and vice versa, uh, they really do have to link together. They are a critical component of success for uh, any corporation, and so they should be working together. But finally, 
there is a myth that the marketing people believe in. And that myth is find a need and fill it. All we have to do is find a need and then we can go fill that and we will be rich beyond our wildest dreams. Well, the fact of the matter is that's bogus. Find a need and fill it is completely bogus. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. Let's use me, for example. Okay, as a marketing consultant and a strategic marketing consultant, I work with corporations small and large. I give speeches, I do consulting, I do uh, uh, workshops and seminars, I do facilitations, I do these webcasts and videos and things like that. And, you, and in my own opinion, based on the results that I've had with corporations and associations and events that I've worked with over the last, like, what, 22 years, 20, almost 23 years now, uh, I believe that everybody needs me. There's only one problem with that. Not everybody agrees with that statement. In fact, I would dare say that a lot of you that are watching this right now, even you don't agree with that statement. So you see, the fact that I think that, you know, find a need and fill it, I think that everybody needs my service because I can help them be more successful, well, that's bogus. See, find a need and fill it is absolutely bogus. See, we're not trying to go out and find the need. That, we don't believe that everybody has a need for our service. We want to find people that are going to raise their hand. We want people, to, the way that we're going to be successful in marketing is not to go back and go after all of these people, not to try to get everybody, say for example, at a trade show to come into my booth. I don't care if everybody comes into my booth. I just want people who are interested, who have shown that they have a they that they understand and they agree that they have a need for my type of product or service. Maybe they have a challenge. Maybe they have a problem. Maybe they have a desire. Maybe they've got a a uh, a project that they're working on. Uh, maybe they've got a a need to grow. Maybe they whatever it is that they have a need for, they have to agree that they have a need for my type of product or service first. See if if you don't agree that you have a need for my type of product or service, then uh, the first thing I have to sell you on is that you agree with that need. You have to first acknowledge that you have that need. And if you don't acknowledge that you have that need, I'm never going to sell you. Okay? So the fact is, is that if I'm at a trade show, for example, I would much rather have 10 people who raise their hand and they're saying to me, hey, yep, I've got a need for this type of product or service, and I think that you might be able to help me with that. See, I would rather have 10 of those people walk into my booth than have 100 people who do not agree with that need. So what it boils down to is that in my marketing efforts and when I'm working with my clients in their marketing efforts, I want to insert that one more step. I want to insert that one step in there that first gets people to raise their hands. I want them to raise their hands and say, yep, I've got a need. I acknowledge that I've got a need. See, it's not find a need and fill it. Find and need and fill it. Well, that's good English, isn't it? Oh well, it's find an acknowledged need and fill it. And once I can get a group of people who fit that profile, who agree that they have an acknowledged need for my type of product or my type of service, then my job of closing them and turning them into a new customer becomes a lot easier. Well, that's it for this segment. Again, short and sweet. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and hope to see you on another segment real soon.